Welcome back. Um, I hope everybody has had a good break. Uh, 2023 is here with us. First and foremost, on behalf of Roare Central Hotel, I want to say thank you to all those people who checked in here, who supported us over the holiday period. People who spent uh, their holiday time in our accommodation, uh, accommodated here. We are very grateful. Uh, we, you guys are the ones who are keeping us going. And you also give me the space to be able to speak to you every week or every couple of days about what's happening in the country. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much on my behalf and behalf of everybody who works for Ruare Central. Now the year has begun and it has begun, it's the first week and it feels like we are, we are on top form. I mean, I was just looking at um, the news items from Nanyuki. One of the things, as usual, uh, the president is doing is setting an agenda. Now all of us are talking about the fact that he's in a new key, all of us are talking about the fact that he called his old government there, all of us are talking about whether he or not he's trying to control all the arms of government. I know we had a conversation uh, late last year about him talking about the judiciary, now he's called the legislature, he's called the county governments, they all go to sit with him. I think from the positive side, what he's trying to do is make sure everybody knows what his plan is. He wants to make sure Parliament knows what his plan is. He wants to make sure the governors know what, the, what his plan is. And that was one of the things that you could see a dysfunction in the previous government. There was a disconnect between what the county government was running after, what, the, what Parliament was running after, and what the executive was doing. And maybe what he's trying to do is solve that problem by making sure everybody is on the same page. The challenge about that is that, for, of course, there are some people who are seated somewhere just waiting for him to do that so that they can start poking holes in his plan. Um, in an ideal situation, Everybody having a plan would be working according to that plan. But you can be sure in the course of the next couple of days, we are going to be listening to the opposition saying, oh no, why is he trying to control parliament? Why isn't he? Does he understand the, about the independence of institutions? So, and that's what politics is all about. But looking, looking with a sharp focus on what he has actually tried to achieve. First, there is no excuse for, by anybody in his government, whether you are a parasito head, whether you are a PS or a CS, that you do not know what Ruto wants to do as president. I, you cannot give that argument. You spent four days listening. And I hear those meetings are starting early, my friend. They are starting on time. They are running according to a program. He actually has a plan. He kept saying during the campaigns, he has a plan. Uh, we didn't believe him, and some of us didn't believe him. But you can see he's implementing something that he has had in his mind. And he's trying to pull everybody on board. So this is a good thing. This is one of the things that was lacking uh, in the past. Something else I also noticed that he has done, and I was telling some friends of mine, uh, some, some leaders of parliament who had actually come to Ruare over the holiday period, and we were just talking about how much investment uh, the president and his party have put into, his, into the politics of the country. They, they are making sure people are up to date with what is happening. And sometimes I feel as if he is going to start, the president is going to start having a challenge balancing politics and policy, because it's always easier to do one thing not both. Policy requires you to be non-emotional, to, to, to think with your mind. Uh, sorry, uh, policy requires you to think with your mind. Politics requires you to think with your heart. When you try to do both at the same time, you struggle. He's doing both at the same time. He's playing very good politics. His political uh, game is in, in good form. And he's also trying to done policy at the same pace. The problem is, I am not sure he's going to be able to balance it. But again, it's very, very early in the year. We, the year has just begun. This is actually his first calendar year as president. Uh, his government is in place. His 100 days are over. So now we can start really criticizing him and looking at his policies. So let's see what happens after they come out of Nanyuki and they get into office. Whether they'll be able to actually implement what they have agreed. As I said, some of the ideas uh, that I had in Nanyuki are interesting. The idea of a paperless bureaucracy is something I would want to see. Uh, part of it is because you keep hearing a lot of people in government want to have a letter in a file so that if things go wrong, he's able to say, me, I was told by my boss and I even have a letter to show what my boss said. Emails can get rubbed out, uh, SMSs can get rubbed out. So it is going to be interesting to see whether the resistance, the normal bureaucracy, uh, bureaucratic resistance to change is going to allow him to implement some of the really good ideas that he has. But that is what it is. So... Kudos for starting the year, right? Uh, getting everybody on the same page, having the whole government thinking in one line and listening. Of course, one of the things that came out of Nanyuki uh, was uh, my good friend, Rigadi Gashagua, 
climbing the mountain and praying for us, not once, not twice, actually three times. Um, he went up the, the mountain and he was going at, up at 3 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning. And man, uh, my, my dad and I were watching one of those uh, news items and my dad said, ah, yeah, he looks like a Mau Mau. So he's really getting this thing of Kijana um, Mau Mau, right? Um, he, he's, initially when he started doing the things he was doing, like many people, I thought he was taking it a bit too far, that he was overdoing it. He was creating a niche that would make him look like a political buffoon. But gradually you're starting to see this looks like a guy who has a plan. He's he literally cut a niche for himself. We talked about Nanyuki, and then we talked about Rigazi. You know, we keep talking about him. The other day from Nyeri, he made a comment about uh, Nairobi and uh, Matatus and whether they should come in. And we forgot and it was like three weeks ago. We are still talking about it. He, somehow, either deliberately or by default, and in politics it's very hard for things to be done by default, he's generally, uh, gradually cutting a niche for himself as somebody who is his own person. But then he's also being very strategic. You get... The vibe he has decided he's not going to go into a fight with his boss. So he's always very uh, humble and very... He's, he's not trying to challenge his boss. He's not trying to challenge his boss's space. And the boss is also showing him... You so saw in Nanyuki there was an interesting moment where uh, Ruto seemed like he was defending uh, Rigadi in regards to the work he's been given and the mandate they have, where he said, uh, the deputy president and myself have, were mandated by the people, then everybody else here has been given the mandate through us. That was like a way of trying to say me and Rigadi are on this side and everybody else was on that, on that side. There was a feeling initially that there was some tension, but they're managing it. If there's any tension, they're managing it well. But you can tell Rigadi is doing his work, but he's cutting his uh, initial for himself. And he's done a good job. He's now been given the responsibility of trying to solve uh, Meru's issues trying to bring Kawira and the MCAs, that's going to be an interesting thing to watch, uh, how that is going to show up. But then also he's delivered. I mean, you, you see, we had this issue in Kandara, we had the by-elections that just happened, and UDA has actually been able to cut a niche for themselves, and they're they are, they are still showing their supremacy. They have managed to recover every seat that they had, which is something, because usually when a government, when a party takes over government, then they start losing steam as they start having their own internal fights. They took all their seats back, and that is something. I think as we try and wrap up this thing, one of the things I, I want to say, going back to Rigadi, his power of messaging is brilliant. Recently, as the year was ending, he said that as we get into 2023, Maudo ni matatu. We are going to be dealing with tea, we are going to be dealing with coffee, we are going to be dealing with milk. That is a powerful message. If he is able to keep on that message, it's a kind of message that can bring the entire region behind him. And I know there are people who feel like he's concentrating too much on the region, that he should remember he's the deputy president of the country. But then he's also telling us that everybody comes from somewhere. Whether you're a chief minister, you have issues about sugar in Western. Whether you come from the coast, that you get into office to deal with where you come from and the rest of the country. He has set his agenda. He's saying that him is going to be dealing with tea, he's going to be dealing with coffee, he's going to be dealing with milk. Now, those are things that everyone who comes from where he comes from, which is the Mount Kenya region, which comes from Central Province, or Meru, or those of us who come from Nyeri, we are looking at him and saying, well done. If you can deliver that one, we will listen to you. And this is how you start getting onto your way of being a regional kingpin, because as we said, it is a process. One of the questions that was asked as I finish, uh, in, one, in some of the feedback I was getting from the last, the last couple of videos we've done, is what happened to Jubilee. We didn't field anyone in the by-elections. And in my opinion, I think Jubilee is starting to look like a lost case. Um, sometimes we are asked by people, why didn't you guys see this coming? And now that I'm outside and I've listened to people and I've heard people speaking, I have talked to people from Nyeri and across various places I've been visiting, I have to admit, first, as Jubilee, we were disconnected. We were disconnected from the ground. We were not listening to the ground. Maybe we focused too much on doing government work and forgot that we are primarily politicians. But very, very clearly, there was that feeling of disconnection that came out looking like arrogance, came out looking like pride, came out that people reached a point they got angry with us because we were not listening to them. And, and that is one of the things 
we are going to have to keep dealing with. Uh, those who will be in Jubilee, those who will stay in Jubilee, I am not sure how many people are going to stay in Jubilee. I know a lot of us are considering whether this is a party we want to be in, but that is something. A question that was asked last week, what happened to Jubilee? That's what I would say happened to Jubilee. We just got disconnected. And we hope that the other parties, including UDA, which is now a ruling party, is learning from what happened to us. Anyway, see you again soon. Let's keep talking. Thank you very, very, very much.